There are quite a few setup considerations for multi-currency. Do you want to differentiate between Canadian dollars and American dollars? How often do you want to enter a new exchange rate? What is the functional currency for your company? What are the exchange rates themselves? Which accounts can we post transactions in foreign currencies to? Set the default posting accounts to allow game loss calculations to post. Identify which customers and vendors use which currencies. Use your customer and vendor classes where appropriate to mass assign currencies. In transaction entry, journal entries, purchase order entry, sales transaction entry, you need to be careful with foreign currencies. If you leave your currency view set to functional, the entry you are keying is in that functional currency. Even if you change the currency of the transaction, you are still keying in functional currency. You can see why the differentiation between Canadian and American can quickly become important, as if you remove the reference of C or US, then you will not have an on-screen prompt that the entry is in the wrong currency. Set your currency view to originating and leave it. This is a per user, per screen setting. This way you will always be keying in the currency of the transaction that you are entering. The way you access the currency view is going to look different depending on which setting you have for your user preferences. Menu bar will give you the currency note drop down in the top right corner, whereas action pane and pane strip will give you a view menu. If you cross currencies when you want to make a payment, you can only apply that payment after the transaction is posted. The exchange rate on a transaction may change prior to posting. Therefore, the system cannot calculate the gain or loss until the transaction is posted. Once the transaction is posted, you will be able to apply. To inquire on multi-currency values in the general ledger, Use the Multi-Currency Summary Inquiry window. This will show you the total originating currency transactions and the total of any functional currency transactions. If functional currency is Canadian, a single currency GL account such as US Bank should only have one currency, American, and no functional currency balances. Multi-currency inquiries on subledgers require the use of customer and vendor inquiry windows or document inquiry windows. These windows have the same currency view switch that the transaction entry windows had. If you view in functional currency and reprint a transaction, you will reprint in that functional currency. At month end, you may want to revalue your foreign currencies. Revaluation allows you to change the functional currency value of the foreign currency without changing the value of the foreign currency itself. Determine if you want to revalue the subledger or the general ledger. Revaluing the subledger will take the current value of the transactions. Places where realized and unrealized gained losses are important, this may be a consideration. Places where the complete GL balance must be revalued will want to revalue the financial series. Consider if you want a reversing or a non-reversing journal entry. I'll show an example of that during the demonstration. Use the restrictions button to narrow down what is being revalued. Let's go over to Dynamics GP now for a demonstration. Let's look at our multi-currency setup. The first decision we have to make is if we're going to have a visual cue between our currencies. Here we have Canadian dollars with a C in front of it. To differentiate a Canadian dollar from an American dollar, the American dollar is simply a dollar sign. Moving to the multi-currency exchange rate table setup, we have to decide how often you want to set the exchange rate. Will it be daily, weekly, monthly, how long will the exchange rate be valid for? The users will not be able to use an exchange rate that has expired. 
Be careful to understand that the expiration date does not define a range of time that the exchange rate can be used for transactions. If you have daily rates, a June 1st rate that expires on June 5th does not mean that that rate is in effect for five days. It means that after June 5th, transactions dated June the 1st will no longer be able to be entered using that rate. The multi-currency setup window is where you set the functional currency. This will be the base currency for your system, the home currency, so to speak. Note that the reporting currency does not have to match your functional currency. There are fields that are not marked as required fields that are actually required in this window. You must set the default transaction rate types. You can have different rate types if you choose to. When you take money from customers in sales, to the bank, you'll get a different exchange rate than when you buy money from the bank. GP allows you to reflect those different rates if you choose to. Typically, you will set each series to the same rate type to avoid complication. Open the multi-currency exchange rate maintenance window. This window holds the exchange rates. Notice that the rates have both date and time stamps. This allows you to have different rates effective during different parts of the day. Here I have two rates on January 31st, that was a Thursday. So during the day, the rate was the closing rate from January 30th. However, I need a spot rate for the close of day on January 31st for evaluation purposes. Open the Select Account Currency window in order to identify which accounts will accept transactions in which currencies. It is likely you'll want all your income statement accounts to accept transactions from all currencies. In the balance sheet, however, it is likely that you will not. Here, my U.S. bank account accepts transactions in U.S. dollars. Use the multi-currency mass account update window to update multiple accounts at one time. Here, you can assign currencies, update the revaluation and revalue options, and if you're doing multi-currency consolidations, change the translation type. With this screen, you can update numerous accounts all at the same time. Here, accounts range from 6,000 to 7,000 will be set to accept US dollars. Use the posting account setup window to set default values for the realized gain, realized loss, unrealized gain, and unrealized loss account. If you want to have specific currency GL accounts, you can do this on the currency ID window. Moving to transactions, look at the purchase order entry window. Here we see the currency dropdown where we can change the currency view. This is also available under view currency. Set this window to originating to ensure that the purchase orders being issued are for the correct amount in the correct currency. This setting is window and user specific. Set it on sales transaction entry, purchase order entry, journal entries, and various inquiry windows. Open the apply sales document window. When a transaction crosses currencies, you need to post the transaction before you can apply it. If a customer has a US dollar invoice and you take Canadian dollars from them, you have to post the payment in order for the, to apply the payment to the invoice. Here we can see the apply window has a $10 Canadian payment being applied to a $100 American invoice. You will often cross currencies with credit card purchases from US vendors that get paid in Canadian dollars when you pay the credit card company. Open the receivables transaction inquiry window. From this window, you can drill to transactions. Depending on the currency view you have selected, you will see the transaction in originating or functional currency. Printing the document, you will then get either the originating or functional currency that was selected. Where you have no differentiator on the currency setup, you may not have an indicator that you are printing in the wrong currency. Here we see our $100 American invoice being displayed as 130 Canadian dollars. When I reprint the invoice, 
I get the 130 Canadian dollars printed. Inquiring on the general ledger now, the multi-currency summary inquiry window shows the different currencies being tracked. Where you have accounts that should be a single currency account, like a US bank account, look to make sure that you only have a US balance. That means no other currencies are shown and that the total functional currency is zero. If you do show a balance, any revaluation entries could be incorrect. In this case, someone has posted $10 Canadian to the US bank account. This should be corrected or reversed at the source of the transaction to ensure any subledger entries are correct. At month end, the multi-currency revaluation screen will allow you to change the functional currency value of a foreign currency. Use the results radio button to set to print report only to get a preview of what will happen when you press the revalue button. Decide if you want to have a revaluation entry that is unrealized or realized. Decide if you're making a reversing entry. When deciding if you want to use a reversing entry or not, consider what values you want in each month. If you're making a differentiation between realized or non-realized gain or loss, this may also affect your decision. In this spreadsheet, we can see an invoice coming in on May 28th for 100 American dollars. The rate of the day makes this have a Canadian equivalent of $134.92. At month end, a revaluation happens. There's a gain of $5.34 as the exchange rate went down. In June, the invoice gets paid when the exchange rate is 1.32. The question is, do you want to show a gain or a loss in June? The net income will remain the same. With a reversing entry, you will see two transactions that net to the same amount, as if there was not a reversing entry. As you can see, if you make a distinction between realized and unrealized gain or losses, this can be important, as the $5.34 was really an unrealized gain or loss, whereas the $2.42 was a real gain or loss. Some will say that since the subledger is not changing, you should reverse the journal entry. Some will say the subledger is irrelevant and show the real gain or loss. Both are valid accounting treatments. It is entirely up to you to decide. Now that you have decided if you are going to have a reversing or non-reversing entry, move back to the multi-currency revaluation window. Select the year and period to be revalued. Select where to get the exchange rate date from with the drop-down. If you choose one of the date selections, then the exchange rate will come from the applicable rate table. If you choose to have multiple revaluation options, use the multi-currency revaluation restrictions to narrow down what is being revalued. The revaluation report shows a $10 gain in this case which is actually incorrect, as the Canadian equivalent in the account is already $140 due to the $10 Canadian entry that someone has made. Only once this $10 entry is reversed will the exchange gain loss calculated be correct. That's all for today. We have reviewed the multi-currency setup screens, looked at the effect of multi-currency on transaction entry and inquiry screens, and looked at how to perform a revaluation. 